I was seven at the time, so we were just in music class when me and my best friend Noah got called down to the office. And my dad came and picked me up. It was really dark outside because of all the smoke. And when we were driving out, we had a line of people behind us and in front of us. So it was really hard to get out. We made preparations. We had a wood pile that was up close to the house. We moved all that to the end of the road. Uh, we soaked down our trees. We soaked down our roof. We watered our grass. And we left knowing that there was definitely a potential that there was going to be damage in the neighborhood, but we couldn't have possibly fathomed the size and scale of the damage. I did manage to save a few photo albums and Jesse's baby book, but other than that, all the important stuff that we had was just gone. When people would say, you know, oh, I you lost your home and now you can rebuild a new one. And I'm like, but that's, that's not really what it was for me. It was like, well, my memories and like, we really loved our home. So. It worked really hard to get into that home. Yeah. <laughs> the second day was probably the hardest when I kind of realized what was happening. That was the hardest because I actually understood, whoa, the whole city is being burnt down right now. Like I'm losing everything, you know? It's a really incredible experience to be fleeing uh, a major event like this, worried about your life and your livelihood, while you see so many Albertans driving into it. And these were people driving in that had surplus dog food or had surplus bottles of water. And it was really neat, you know, someone would be pulled over on the side of the road with a barbecue, making hot dogs and hamburgers just for anyone evacuating. So. As much as there was darkness all around us, there was so much positivity, so much light. Immediately following the fire, the first relief that was provided to any members of 955 was from their union. And it, that money went towards, you know, find a place to sleep, get a toothbrush or a pair of underwear. Uh, literally people fleed with nothing but the clothes on their back. Sadly, a UCP government was elected. They stripped away our ability to provide that kind of support to our members and to our community. But we're confident we will get it back. I am a third generation oil sands worker. My grandpa moved here in the 70s to work in the oil sands. My father followed suit and finished his career working in the oil sands. And now my brothers and sisters and I are all working in the oil sands as well. We represent 12,500 members here in Northeastern Alberta. Uh, we have currently three to 5,000 members supporting the oil sand sites at any given time. We run haul trucks, dozers, excavators, graders, but we also support the plant site maintenance, the upgrading and refining. We are very proud to be IUOE. We work very hard every day doing meaningful work that helps drive the Canadian economy, uh, but we're also well aware that the economy is evolving and driving us as well. Our members are very aware that we are in a climate crisis. Having lived through uh, significant climate events, 2,500 pieces of infrastructure were lost. The majority of that was homes. Many of those were the homes of my members. Many of them lost their, their jobs, their livelihoods for months on end. The problem with climate change is it tends to be ignored by a lot of people because they, instead of want, trying to learn about it and stop it, they just want to continue because it helps them make money. Instead of worrying about what's going to happen in the future, they want to worry about their future and not the generations to come. Our membership is looking forward to the opportunity to build the economy and infrastructure of tomorrow. We all know the companies are going to be fine but we can't depend on them to take care of the workers. If we don't organize, if we don't look out for each other, who's gonna take care of the worker? We're gonna ensure that we're at the forefront of the change. We're going to demand that workers are taken care of and have a plan moving forward. When workers organize together, we can tackle the climate crisis head on and lift everyone up.